So it's been one year since the disaster that was TanaCon, and Tana Mojo just sat down with Paper Magazine to tell the truth about what really happened, and I read the whole thing so you don't have to. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take a look at what's going on in the YouTube community, try to see what lessons we can pull from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And by the way, my birthday is tomorrow. Not only will I be 34 years old, which is uh, I will also be celebrating seven years of sobriety. So do me this one birthday favor. Go follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. I would love, love, love to get to 10,000 followers over on Instagram so I can get that beautiful swipe up story feature. Oh, it would make my birthday so much better. All right, but anyways, yeah, uh, Tana Mojo just did an interview with Paper Magazine and it really got me thinking. All right, so let me catch you up to speed. Let's talk about what's going on, TanaCon. I'm sure a lot of you know, but let's recap it. So Tana Mojo, <clears throat> she used to attend VidCon and she wasn't treated with the respect she felt she deserved, right? And a lot of other creators felt the same way, but Tana Mojo made a video saying F VidCon and kind of set this thing in motion and just talked about how she wasn't going to VidCon um, in 2018 and how they screwed her over. And this got a bunch of people riled up. A bunch of other creators started making videos saying how they've been screwed over by VidCon. And the seed got planted in Tana's head that she should start her own convention and call it TanaCon, right? And this is gonna be this, this amazing event with all these creators who felt like they were controversial and didn't get the uh, respect and attention they deserved from VidCon. So she was gonna throw TanaCon and she paired up with this dude named Michael Weist, uh, who was a young CEO of a organization that was you know, putting on events and things like that called Good Times, right? So they end up doing this event and it failed miserably, all right? Like thousands of people showed up, a lot of them from California, but there were also many people who showed up from different parts of the world. And yeah, they, they overbooked the venue, um, just a lot of things went very bad. A lot of people were stuck outside in the sun, everything like that. And yeah, basically they had to cancel the whole event and some people got refunds, a lot of people got refunds, but there was a lot of people who were still kind of left to the wayside who spent money on travel and everything like that. A lot of parents were really upset too. Well, anyways, after that, Michael Weiss made a little short documentary of the whole event from his point of view and everything, and Shane Dawson did his series prior to that. And yeah, it was a bunch of finger pointing and blame. But anyways, Paper Magazine just sat down with Tana Mojo to discuss what's it been like a year later. and. Just so you know, like if you want, I'm linking the article down below, but trust me, there's there's nothing new. There's nothing new about TanaCon in that article. There's some interesting things, but nothing new. If you watch the Shane Dawson series, if you've watched the Michael Weiss documentary that came out, like you did not miss anything, all right? So in the article, Tana Mojo still ta says that she takes full responsibility, which is kind of iffy like whenever we're saying that we take responsibility for something but then still shuck some blame somewhere else like we're not taking full responsibility and when you put your name on something like TanaCon like it is full responsibility right before sitting down to record this video I was actually thinking about the parallels between like Tana Mojo and TanaCon and then Jaclyn Hill and what happened with her lipstick and how she was putting the blame on the lab it's like when you put your name on something like you must take 1000 percent ownership of it all right but anyways there were a few interesting things in this article though because something that i'm always thinking about like i mentioned i'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic and my question is is like do people change can people change because i'm a huge advocate that people can change and i've been watching you know news about tana mojo i don't like subscribe to her channel watch like all of her stuff but obviously like i know everything that's gone on with her and i'm sitting here and i'm watching and like I'm asking myself like, has Tana Mojo changed? Because I think that everybody can change, but the question is, do they put the work in? Do they put the effort in? So like, 
I've looked back at like Tana's past and she's done a lot of things. Aside from TanaCon, like I made a video a long time ago about how she was driving while high and apparently she didn't even have a license, but she was high, she ended up wrecking the car. There was the video of her filming a body in a bathroom of somebody who overdosed and everything. And a lot of people were like, no, that was, that was Logan Paul. Well, Tana Mojo did the same thing. But anyways, she, she is a very young woman and she, she seems to be growing. So one part of this article was when she talks about like her story time and how she kind of grew her channel and she shares her stories because she lives this crazy life. And she says something, I'll put it up on the screen right here, but she said something along the lines of like, I attract the craziest stuff, right? And here's the thing for anybody out there, cause I used to be the same way. I used to be the same way. I'm like, why do the craziest things always happen to me? I'm just trying to have a normal life and do my normal thing. But the reality was, I was getting into a lot of crazy situations. I was hanging out with a lot of crazy people. I was doing a lot of crazy things. And when you do those things, statistically, it increases your chances of crazy things to happen, right? Like a lot of us want to sit there and just be like, I don't know, things just magically happen to me, right? But when we see what we're doing, the choices we make, you know, the behaviors that we have, it pulls that type of stuff into happening. Now, something somebody brought up the other day was like Tana Mojo has learned a little bit throughout this process because she's not really doing the story times like she used to. And that's what kind of grew her audience. But something that was pointed out in Content Cop is that Tana Mojo does have a, eh, a flaw where she kind of blows up and exaggerates stories. Some might even call it lying and things like that. And lately she's been just filming more of her like actual life. And that makes me wonder if she's grown a bit too, because like, I don't know if you can relate to this. Maybe let me know down in the comments if you can, but I know I can. Like back in the day, like I used to lie about everything for no reason, for no good reason. Some of it though was to try to impress people and I would inflate stories and I would, you know, make things crazier than they were. And it was because I was insecure. And what I wonder with Tana Mojo is if she's growing as a young woman and she's starting to understand that people actually like her or enjoy being around her without her having the craziest stories and things like that. Like she's friends with Shane Dawson, obviously. And Shane Dawson has had a lot of controversy from his podcast where he kind of like, made this kind of like shock humor and like made up these stories and everything like that to get laughs. And he's talked about many times how he's not that old Shane Dawson anymore and he's more comfortable with who he is. And I wonder if that's happening with Tana Mojo as well. Now, something else that I found interesting in this article was they asked her about her Lil Xan story, right? And she talked about how she shared that story. And uh, one thing was that she did take some responsibility. Like, what did I expect? Like she said something along the lines of like, what did I expect dating a SoundCloud rapper? I'm like, yes, yes. Because like, that's something that all of us need to learn from, right? Like we, we have a type, right? We have a type, uh, a certain guy or a certain girl, whoever it is. And then we're surprised when certain things happen. Like my type used to be crazy women, right? And then I was absolutely blown away when crazy stuff would happen. So it is awesome that Tana Mojo was like, yo, what do I expect? But anyways, she talked about how she got a lot of feedback from her audience and a lot of people said they can relate to that. So that got me thinking a little bit more because one of my main issues with Tana Mojo for a long time was she has such a young audience, right? So by the way, if you watch Tana Mojo, let me know how old you are down in the comments or if you're a parent, let me know if your kids watch Tana Mojo because this is just something I think about. So those of you who don't know, I'm the father of a 10 year old boy. And yeah, like I think it is up to us as parents to take the responsibility of knowing who our children are watching on YouTube or TV or whatever it is, right? And I asked myself like, you know, is Tana Mojo a good or a bad influence on kids, right? And I'll always say that parents need to take the full accountability for that. Like, would I let my son watch Tana Mojo? Mm, yes and no. The, the thing that's tricky with people like Tana Mojo and even sometimes Shane Dawson, because my son loves watching like old Shane Dawson videos, but he recently got into like Shane's old conspiracy videos is that you never know what you're gonna get. Like sometimes like a video might be totally like PG or PG 13, right? And then next thing you know, like when they were doing their Chili's mukbang, they were talking about boofing a lot, right? You never know what you're gonna get. But like 
Now Tana Mojo, for the most part, I haven't seen her talking about the abuse of like prescription medications. Like she used to talk a lot about like Adderall and Xanax and things like that. And now like every other five minutes, she's talking about getting high smoking weed, right? And I sit there, I'm like, is this a terrible influence? Because even though I'm a recovering drug addict, I have no problems against weed, right? I don't smoke weed because it always led me back to like sniffing pills, but I don't think it's bad for anybody else to smoke weed. Hell, it's a lot safer than alcohol, right? So I look at that, I'm like, huh, like, I don't think Tana is as bad as she used to be. And if you are more of a Tana Mojo fan than I am, and you know some crazy stuff she's doing that I don't know, let me know down in the comments below. But as somebody who makes videos to try to get the audience to learn from the people that we're watching, like, it feels like she is growing and she is maturing. Like, you know, I wouldn't say she is like the role model of YouTube, right? But if you watch somebody's behaviors and their actions, like we always have to ask ourselves, like, are they changing? Are they growing? Because too many of us hold on to resentments against people. And we believe that they can't change or they'll never change. But it's a process, like growing takes a long time. And we have to notice these kind of subtle things. And I was reading this article, I'm like, huh, I think Tana has changed just a little bit, but her new MTV shows coming out and stuff like that, and only time will tell. And she's gonna be at VidCon this year. By the way, if you're going to VidCon, I'm going to VidCon too. Come say hi to me, all right? But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Like a year later, do you think Tana Mojo has grown, has changed, or have you grown or changed as a person? Do you think that's important to give people the opportunity to grow and change? Let's have a discussion down in the comments below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. If you'd like to become a patron, click or tap right there. All right, thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.